I'm Paul Lucas and I have the best job in the world. I get to fly around the world and make videos for YouTube, reviewing airlines and train trips and going behind the media hype, drawing back the curtain to find out what you really get for your money. I don't work with the airlines and I pay for all my trips myself, so you can be sure I'm giving you unfiltered, unbiased opinion about how to travel, who to fly and whether it's worth the money. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell to be notified of all my videos as and when they land on YouTube. Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to sunny Spain. I'm in Madrid this afternoon and today I'm taking budget high-speed rail all the way over to Barcelona in the east of the country. Come with me as we check out budget high-speed rail. We go with we go. Enjoy the video. Our journey today begins at Madrid's Atocha station, which is the main railway station serving the Spanish capital. It opened as far back as 1851, although the main structure is actually a replacement built in 1892 after the original suffered a huge fire. There's been plenty of modernization since then, and not all of it is architecturally pleasing. However, the old train shed remains and houses a fabulous botanical garden, making Atocha one of Europe's most unique and pleasant stations to walk around. At least, that is, before you get to the security lines. More on that later. Most services here are operated by the Spanish national rail operator, Renfe, as you can see by the ticket facilities here. Wigo is a subsidiary of the French railways SNCF and tickets can only be bought online, so be prepared and buy in advance. Renfe's AVE service is the full service option on this route. Wigo has been allowed to operate low-cost service on the Barcelona to Madrid corridor and competes with Renfe's own low-cost option, Avlo. So there's loads of choice. Both Avlo and Wigo have about the same average fare, about €20 Euro one way depending on when you travel. But only on Wigo might you be lucky enough to find a small number of €9 Euro one way fares. One of the big downsides about having those security protocols here is not just the time penalty it gives you taking the train, but also the fact that all of the trains are actually hidden away behind smoked glass partitions. You can't actually see the main train shed. And call me a romantic, but I just love to see a whole load of trains sitting in an old fashioned train shed, just waiting to go somewhere. All right, there we go. Platform six, so we need to go upstairs and find our way. You may be surprised to learn Spanish high-speed railways have airport-style security. When opening the high-speed rail network about 30 years ago, the Spanish government was under threat of a bombing campaign from ETA, the Basque separatist organisation, and the security was implemented and has not gone away since. So it turns out the security check isn't really too bad. It's pretty cursory. You don't have to get rid of your liquids or take your laptop out. It takes about five minutes. However, uh, talking about a time penalty, this queue of people on my left here that's actually the queue for the Barcelona train it's half an hour to go until boarding the platform was just announced and there are I'm not joking there must be two or three hundred people in this queue this should be easy here we go right at the end of the line this is the, this is the queue for the Barcelona train ridiculous Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN or virtual private network. Surfshark is part of my personal travel arsenal for a whole list of reasons. If you're not attracted to the idea of leveraging lower ticket prices or staying safe on public Wi-Fi, maybe the whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption and a quick kill switch in case you lose internet might convince you to give it a go. But I find it so annoying when you can't access some content overseas, but Surfshark can help. Activate the VPN and select an appropriate spoof location and voila, the content is restored. It's dead easy and costs absolute peanuts too. You'd be mad not to consider it, especially as Surfshark have a special deal for my viewers. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Glasses. And here we are, our TGV duplex train is at the platform. 
A Renfe Pato Class 102 train sits behind it and a Siemens Class 103 is opposite. Both those trains are part of Renfe's full-service high-speed offer. These TGV duplexes used to run in France and still contain the old first class section, sold at a small premium as XL seats. There's no additional service in there, it's just the bigger seats you pay for. Alright, finally here we go, coach one. We're in one of the XL seats today, should be just under three hours to Barcelona. Here we go, it's WeGo. As we enter, note the luggage rack. Very handy for your bags. There's no checked luggage on European trains and you must only bring what you can handle. This is one of three XL carriages with rather lovely one-two layout seating both upstairs and downstairs. The regular carriages look like this with a two-two layout and narrower, less roomy seats. All right, let's talk tickets. I managed to secure one of the bargain nine euro fares, which, as you can see, are generally only available a long way ahead of travel. Nine euro is pretty cheap for three hours on a high speed train. And if you want to upgrade to XL, it's best to get WeGo Plus for an extra nine euro. The seat upgrade alone is seven euro and the allowance for a large bag is very helpful if you're bringing a suitcase. The website is not perfect, but does include a very handy seat selector and even tells you Coach 1 is at the Madrid end, that is, the western end, of the train. It's all very handy and straightforward. I ended up going for one of the solo seats, seat 30 in Coach 1. A prompt ticket check later and it's time to settle in for this trip, which covers 620 kilometers in 2 hours and 52 minutes, an average of 216 kilometers per hour, and that's even accounting for our two station stops of Saragotha and Tarahona on the way. These trains are not new, but they are very comfortable. There's stacks of room, an ample tray which slides out from the seat in front, and plenty of surface area for something to eat, a newspaper or your laptop. Larger bags should go in the racks at the end of the carriage, but small ones and jackets will fit in the little overhead racks you can see here. The route takes us through tunnels and some stunning terrain, but it may be sunny and you might find the roll down blind useful. It can get very bright. There are air vents next to your seat, individual reading lamps and a small footrest which is useful if you're pretty short, but I guess most people don't use these. Finally, along with one charge point, there is an electronically operated recline function which is pretty generous. Overall, it's a comfortable way to travel and way better than taking the plane. The bathrooms on board were very clean and bigger and better than the ones you'll find on the narrow body aircraft you'll find flying between Madrid and Barcelona. Bear in mind that while many French trains have a foot pump flush, this one has a push button. 
in the vestibule, a small communal area which even has its own reading lamps and, time for the best feature of all, the food car. This train is fast and only does relatively short journeys, and this is not a restaurant. But there is a decent range of snacks on board, and the prices are not obscene. As you can see, it was a pretty popular space, and it was leaning room only for me. Although this is probably the nicest view I've had while eating noodles. This is Zaragoza, a short stop here of only a couple of minutes, and we're away again. There's cheap Wi-Fi on board in case you want it, but the connection was just okay and not really any better than using your phone signal, so I'd probably pass on it next time. I can't think of many reasons you'd want to sit downstairs, but if you can't manage the stairs or have heavy bags, here's what the lower deck looks like. Very similar, although the views are nowhere near as good. Camp de Tarahona, the last stop shortly before Barcelona. It is of course possible to buy tickets to these intermediate stations, although nearly everyone was on this train for the full distance. So, what do I think? Well, for 9 euro, well, 18 euro as I got an XL seat with WeGo Plus, it's pretty much unbeatable. I can't think of many better value high speed railway journeys in Western Europe. We were on time, comfortable, and although there was some security protocol, nothing like as disruptive as an airport. City centre to city centre in 2 hours and 52 minutes, faster than the plane, and while I'm a flight reviewer and I've absolutely no leg to stand on and lecture you about the environment, the train is more responsible. I'd definitely take WeGo again. This was fun, relaxing and convenient. We arrive into Barcelona's Sants station in the city centre on time at 16.57 on the dot. Thanks so much for coming with me again, and don't forget to visit surfshark.deals forward slash wing in it for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Cheers, and I will see you next time.